Hey guys, this is Doug Perry, Uncle Doug, coming to you from uh, one of the ministry houses here uh, with Fellowship of the Martyrs outside of uh, Kansas City, Missouri. We have been here for a long time, running homeless shelter and food pantry and caring for people. Now we have a farm with a cave under it and all kinds of stuff and uh, writing books and urging the church to do better and trying to call for a community and praying for the bride to be one and on and on. Lots of groaning and weeping and begging and pleading for people to hear and mostly them not hearing. Uh, but uh, I, I, I'm i doing a quick video. I had this dream. I had forgotten all about this, but I was going back through my phone. I had meant to do a video for you guys about it. This was in, this is May uh, the 30th, Saturday, May the 30th, or sometime that night. I woke up at 2 o'clock in the morning and, and on my phone texted myself this uh this dream uh of this may of 2020 um it played like a movie i wasn't in it as far as i could tell if i was some other character i don't know but um it uh it just played like a movie and i was looking for something on my phone that uh, dimensions of something i texted myself at the farm and it came across this and forgot that. And now it's looking a lot more prophetic than I realized when I first did it. So maybe the time's right to tell you guys about it now. Now this is the, sh the, the Cliff's Notes, the short version of it. I dream all the time, all the time. And um, most of the time it's just, you know, I'm, I'm yelling at somebody or it's administrative stuff. I'm having to handle things. I'm, I feel like it's the Lord training me to do stuff. Sometimes it's spiritual warfare and I'm smashing things and whatever. Sometimes preaching or calling people out or whatever, but it doesn't always stick when I wake up and feel like something I should write down and tell people about. Um, there are people that keep a notepad by their bed. I guess I keep my phone by my bed. and But I don't traffic in dreams. Let me say it that way. I don't, I don't uh, try to have them. I don't seek the Lord for them. He is perfectly able to tell me what he wants to tell me when he wants me to, to tell me. And I hear him a lot better, uh, you know, in a face-to-face non uh what well, he says to in in numbers chapter 16 he says to um Aaron and Miriam that to a prophet he speaks in riddles and dreams but Moses he speaks to face to face and uh like a man and I I would rather have I would rather have that than symbology and numbers and dreams and whatever but uh, but he does uh, give me dreams sometimes, and sometimes they're such that I'm supposed to tell you guys about it. There's a, one about zombies um, last year that I put up on the channel, whatever. Anyway, so I'm not, I'm not in, interpreting this. I'm, not, uh, I'm just reporting what the dream was in, as it's on my phone right there uh, from here. You can see the date and everything here. I think if it'll there uh, Sunday May 31st yeah this year okay so in the dream uh, it's centered around an african-american black church in the middle of tribulation uh, after some camps people aren't the same anymore uh, there's a community center across from the church that, that is sort of related to the church. Um, the story is through the eyes of kids. They're meeting at night and in shifts, uh, the church is, so that there's not very many of them at a time, and they're meeting in shifts and mostly meeting at night. They're good for the community, but outside of the community center, um, they're meeting out, uh, outside of the community center, not all together. Um, 
The kids like to go to the community center because stuff's happening there, but it's not like it was. Kids know how to sneak into the center and watch out the window as people come to the church. So the, uh, the, the kids are kind of not the church. The kids are kind of hiding in the community center and watching people come and go from the church. Um, the pastor of the church goes in the back with a congregant lady every time and then joins the meeting later. Uh, Red is the name of a gentle black guy with red hair. He's young and he's really wounded from the camps that he was in during the last pandemic crisis. They're all African American. There's very little rejoicing anywhere. Services are sedated and social distanced. Churches in shifts, community spirit is disrupted greatly because they're not all, they can't all be together. Uh, the kids make a way. They find a way to survive. They found a door that's always unlocked at this large community center that isn't used to capacity anymore. So it's like there's this great big building, but there's a wing of it that nobody ever uses or goes into anymore. And the kids have found a way to keep a door unlocked so they can come and go out of there where nobody ever traffics, ever moves around anymore. And uh, they can they can hide. Um, it's actually housing kids that sneak in and live in the unused part of the building. They have a secret whistle for other kids to know. They're careful not to mention with anything um, so people don't notice they're there all the time. Um, sweetness in the kids, uh, the, there's a sweetness about the kids because this is their normal. They don't know any different. Grown-ups remember better days longingly, uh, expect, but they expect worse to come. Uh, the urban population, this is in, a, in the middle of a city, this isn't a country setting. This is fairly urban in the middle of a city and the population has been decimated. Maybe half the population that there used to be. Many have died, some left, some in hiding. Um, food for the community is provided, but not fellowship suppers. Uh, simple in to-go containers in the playground sitting area at the community center outside across from the church. It used to be a government-run community center, but the church took it over. There's no real funding, can't really even turn on the lights, kids sneaking in and living there. So um, there is a, uh, the, the, the church kind of uses the building and the kitchens in the building to make food for people, but it's all just like, here you go, go eat at the picnic table, get out, everybody's, if they're together, they're outside in small groups. Uh, this was in May, the end of May. So, you know, I, I, I can't say it was. Uh, anyway, it is. It's just a dream. I'm not going to interpret it. You've taken it for what it is. Um, in the in the dream, I was commenting, where's the faith? Where's the joy? Who are the martyrs? The many dead for taking a stand already. Some inspired by it. Some terrified some pragmatically just surviving, just whatever I got to do, just day in and day out surviving. Uh, there was a black woman president, but she was a puppet for the global government. Um, DeAndre uh, was a character in the dream. He was a sweet 30-ish year old church member who's trying to hold it together and inspire people. He was sort of a lay leader or associate pastor or something like that, but he's real frustrated with the senior pastor whose wife has died and he's kind of like fooling around with this congregant lady uh, all the time at the back of the church and kind of distracted and not really not really there. But DeAndre's trying to hold it all together and keep him moving, keep him closer to God. He loves Red and the kids. But he's frustrated with the burnout widow or pastor but trying to be understanding. He's the main hero. Uh, DeAndre is in the thing. Another main character is Rebecca. She's the main hero. She's a little kid with no parents who lives in hiding at the center. She watches everybody and she keeps a journal. Uh, the the, the, the uh, center is like a big old YMCA. Some parts of the old building just marked off limits. But kids sneak in and set up early warning systems with strings and ductwork to jiggle cans if someone is coming. A system of warning whistles. Someone always on the lookout. Kids all have stories of how they ended up there. Older ones always scouting neighborhood for other places to go if necessary. Vacant warehouses and big empty buildings are best. Abandoned motels are bad because they're hard to sneak into and know where to run out the back. You know, a, a motel would be a 
uh, easy, easy place to get trapped. Unparented kids are rounded up and sent somewhere nobody knows where, but they don't ever come back. Lots of gardens and yards of abandoned houses. Leftovers from ministries like the Urban Farm Guys, they're a ministry here in Kansas City we know, that uh, does a lot of community gardens down in the, the worst parts of town. They buy up houses from the land bank for a dollar and rehab them, put people in them, and, and do, do uh, gardens down in the city. Anyway, it says leftover ministries like Urban Farm Guys, who were the first to be rounded up, but left a legacy there so people could be fed. The only way this community is serving, is is surviving, when others don't, is because others were taught to report everything out of the ordinary to the government. This community looks the other way and backs each other up. Many white neighborhoods and suburbs are decimated. Those who think like extended family are still alive. After the government abandoned the center um, and, and pulled back the staff that worked there, the church had keys and just kept using the building. Not officially, but FEMA knows they are still feeding the community and drops off food in trucks regularly, trying to avoid riots. Volunteers make soup and simple sandwiches. Meat is scarce, just mostly basic stuff. Without home gardens, people wouldn't make it. They watch out for each other, but stealing and uh, and looting is harshly punished by the community. No police around hardly anymore. No communication to speak of other than government TV. Nobody is sure what is coming next or how to prepare. They're just surviving. There's no social media. Uh, lots of baseless conspiracy theories and gossip. Internet is gone for the public. It's still in place for the government and the banks and behind-the-scenes stuff, but you have to have a permit to use it at all. No social media, no private news, all of it is off-limits. That was the end of the dream. There was no big crisis to overcome. There was no big victory won. It was just um, scavenging and sustaining in horrible circumstances where at any moment... Uh, gangs or or thugs or people that were hungry or whatever could take whatever you have or the government throw you in a camp and who knows where and who knows what happened to you and it wasn't the first pandemic uh, and um, the people were tired and and the the, uh, there were very few people very few people that were still trying hard that were still loving Jesus and, and trying to, to, to rejoice. Um, there had been people that were martyred that were an inspiration that they could kind of hold to and point to, but most of those were already all gone. And um, the thing I took from the dream the most was that you, you need a tribe. You're going, you're going to need to have a family an extended family of people who will watch your back, who will work together. You can't keep a night watch with one person. You can't be on guard all the time by yourself. You can't uh, grow enough um, or whatever, tend the garden, do everything that needs done, find water, cook everything by yourself. You're going to need a tribe to be a part of. And... um, a people, a group that you can hang with and that isn't um, isn't going to cooperate with the status quo. The only way they can control us is if they get us to control each other. Is if they get us to report each other. If they get us to look the other way when they wipe people out. If they get us to do whatever they it is they need done. That's always been the way um, in, in any totalitarian regime. Um, they have to get you to to rat out which of your neighbors has guns, or which of your neighbors is hoarding food, or which of your you know they are or whatever. They they can't. Uh, there's not enough police, not enough army. They have to convince us to work for them, and um, 
uh, anyway, this was just a snapshot, just a picture of a community of, of a few blocks, just a, 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 the people in a few block area and how they were surviving in an urban core um, where uh, mostly around them people were not surviving. And uh, they, they clearly had people that weren't carrying their weight, people that weren't helping. They, they had people that were trying extra hard. Um, but uh, it was, it was, I woke up, I woke up crying um, for uh, just the whole scene. And more convinced than ever of the need for all of us to be sheep and to be a part of a flock and to know that the leader of that flock and the people in that flock are going to have your back and are going to help you through whatever's coming so black woman president mm, yeah boy uh if trump doesn't win legal challenges and turn this thing over biden can't last very long uh, in fact, may it may all be prearranged for him to step down a week, a month, whatever into into it and have a black woman president who will be a puppet for whoever's pulling the strings behind all this. And uh, who knows? Who knows? But I want to urge you all, get right with the Lord. Hear his voice. He will tell you where the food is. He will tell you when to duck. He will tell you where to hide. He will tell you when to run, and he will tell you who to hang with that's got your back. And uh, you better get about it. You better get about it. I think we're running out of time, and uh, we need to, people need to get serious and uh, get ready for uh, however the Lord leads you. You can't knee-jerk and assume that means buying rations and ammo and whatever um, maybe that's not what the Lord wants maybe the Lord, Lord wants you to help prepare a place for other people to run to like like we've done maybe I don't know I don't know but uh, you better be thinking about uh, uh, what's the most cost effective use uh, for where we're going of your time your money your energy your education your gifts your everything anyway the good news is we know how it ends the good news is we win and uh we're supposed to rejoice through it all and that little snapshot is i, I don't know i don't know who it's for i don't know what it's to speak to i don't know you know i just leave all of that to the interpretation and application of the lord but it was just a picture of a community in the midst of tribulation and beat down and uh, but still surviving in, uh, in in their own ways different different parts of the community some even on top of each other didn't even know they were all there but making a way and surviving anyway that's all I got uh, please comment below if you have some insight on it if it speaks to you if uh, if it urges you to do something um, let me know what you think. In the name of Jesus, amen.